Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. Today's system is from the user Kerbal in Discord so a massive thank you to them for sending this system in. Also uh, for Slav Guy for helping him out in getting this sent over because he has some uh, issues with the sending unfortunately. But without further ado, let's get into this. So their system is called the Comtar system. I've already got it ready to rock and roll so let's go ahead and get into this. So, workshop, and it should already be up here for us. There it is. Okay, let's see what we have got. Right, here it is. Okie dokie. Right, this is a remake, a remake of one of my old projects that I never finished. Okay, right, so the star itself. Comtar is the origin system of the Decorate of Semis, which is the main government of the country species of extraterrestrial life, who resemble early Earth avians. Okay, cool. So first up we have this object here, but we'll quickly read this first. Hang on. The original project included planets around other stars, but I decided to drop that in the updated version. The original was made on update version 27. That was quite a while ago now. I think you can check the workshop page. You might notice this is based on a custom slice empire made a few years ago by now. I even found a possible way to integrate it into a new law, although it would kind of make them irrelevant to main stuff of the world. I don't know Stellaris, I have to say, so I won't be able to recognise anything, um, unfortunately, there. Um, right, anyway, so yeah, the star itself is a fictional star in the constellation uh, Carrier, near the real K-type star uh, V337 Carinae, aka Q Carinae, which you can see in the simulation. Ah, oh, okay. Is that actually in there, then? Oh, right, okay. Yes, there's some other things. Cool. Oh, that's actually quite a lot, isn't there? All right. Nice. Very cool. Um, this place is Comtar at a distance of around 760 uh, light years from the sun. The mass is 1.26 solar and radius of 2.27 solar, which shows the star is a subgiant. You can guess it is bad news for the life in the system. Specifically, the star is a G4I um, or G4IV type star of luminosity of 4.82 solar and a sun-like age of 4.5 billion years. On the main sequence, the star would likely have a F6V spectral class and luminosity half of current. Now, enough about the star and creation history. Let's move on to the planets. That's what we like. So, the first of the planets here. Here it is. Fihar, a planet taking home Mercury's role in a way, being close to star, iron rich and airless rocky planet. However, it has several differences. Its mass is all about two thirds that of Earth and it rotates uh, fast hours and its surface is formed by volcanoes instead of craters. The volcanic plains are darker than mountains due to carbon and other eruption materials concentrating there when atmosphere dissipated and have brownish tint due to more uh, mafic composition in those areas. Nice. There you go. Next up we've got uh, Nushan over here. Nice, uh, deep blue gas giant. This planet has no solar system equivalent, in contrast to a previous one, as it is of a warm giant class, half of Jupiter's. It is a Sudar sky class free gas giant, as it has no, clou or no clouds due to lack of cloud forming chemicals at this temperature. However, it also has no haze and is the cloudless blue is usually dark. This planet has migrated into the inner system from further out, but didn't cause particularly much damage. Okay, interesting. Just managed to sneak in there. How large actually is it? Nine. So, so okay. So it's not the largest thing out there. Well, that, no, it's almost a Jupiter actually. So it's bigger than it's bigger than Salem. Yeah, I always forget. Yeah, uh, ten Earths is a pretty big deal actually. So you know, I don't, when it when it when it, when it again puts it in Earth, I never see it as large. And when you put it into the Jupiters, then you can get the better perspective. So there you go. Looking good. Right, Nushan's moons. So we got this one here. Nish Nishaf is a large iron-rich moon with its brown colour coming from iron oxide, aka rust. Um, it is okay, cool. Uh, next up, we have this one. Is it Firth? It's a bright and pale large moon. It's also interesting due to having blue colour features on its surface. Almost all ways of creating blue rock require water, air, or both. So that leaves a very rare type or tin or as one of the explanations. And lastly, we have fin Finash over here. It's the smallest of the three, but it's still decently sized. It is dark grey due to volcanic basalt, and cracks show that it's geologically is still active. Alrighty. Looking good. Another star in the background there. So next up we've got Earthshan. Earthshan? A Venus equivalent of the system, with a high temperature and thick atmosphere. Although slightly thinner than on our Venus, it is a super-Earth with a mass of just under three Earths. Under the atmosphere, it hides a dark surface of volcanic basalt and Venus-like mountains with some glowing hot aliens. So, there you go. Oh, yeah. Very nicely designed, actually. I quite like that. Looking good. Looks quite cool with the glowing behind the clouds there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. That's looking good. Uh, moons. 
So Hifar is a medium-sized moon with a surface suggesting volcanic activity and coloured in orange and walnut shades, possibly from the combination of fine rust and aged volcanic sediments. It is a large crater moon that also has blue tinted areas, likely from the same rare tin ore. Okay. Then we have this moon here. A large crater moon also has blue tinted areas, likely from some rare tin ore. Nice. Okay. Seeing a pattern with a tin ore around those guys. All right. Next up, we are heading to semis over here. So there it is. Looking good. The Hatwell world of the system. A seemingly dry savanna world with many snowy mountains. While it is located on the inner edge of the Hatwell zone, it is on average colder than Earth. This is likely due to many, uh, many high, always snowed mountains bringing the albedo up, while it has much less water than Earth. The atmosphere has a lot of water vapour that assists in the water cycle and increasing albedo. Large areas of this planet are covered in mega cities and efficient farms to support the immense population of Kundrians, the local species. So there it is. Nicely designed and not a, not a full Earth analogue due to the lack of water. An interesting design, you know, you don't often see, you know, the people making the planets with uh, life on it. You know, usually they have quite a high water content, but this planet is the opposite of that. So, you know, they've kind of fought outside the box and um, gone with something a little different, which is quite quite welcome, actually. We like a like a different look. Let's have a full look around. So you can see the, the patches of water are pretty desolate. There is not a lot here. This is a huge... Basically, the whole thing's a continent. The whole planet is one continent with little lakes in it. So there you go. So a complete opposite of what, obviously, our Earth is. Um, with the land to sea ratio. So I'm guessing that water's not the deepest in there either. It must be quite, you know, fairly shallow compared to the earth. Probably quite fairly shallow uh, pockets of water there. Interesting. Very interesting design. I like that. I'll, get, I'll give you a thumbs up for that. Because that is a pretty great, you know, we don't often see designs like that. So, pretty good. Uh, also got a moon as well. Looking good. So, uh, face law or fast law. The only moon, it is a smaller than our moon, with few craters, has a brownish shade and rotates two times per orbit. It also has been extensively colonised by Kundrians as part of the programme to elevate the overcrowding on semis. Nice. Looking good. Right, next up we've got Tinar over here. Oh, there's actually some more, uh, more reading about them actually, hang on. So back to back to these guys. So some stuff about the Kundrians. So they rese vaguely resemble birds, specifically early birds and raptor dinosaurs. Well, I don't have much specific ideas. You can look at this last image on the workshop page. Directive of Semis is a collectivist and bureaucratic United Government of the Kundry, using corporate research to develop ways to manage their problems. Originally, I created this custom empire to check out the overcrowded origin from a random mod. I also try to quickly describe the species traits I choose. So, uh, pargonogenesis is a form of natural asexual reproduction, but the development of offspring doesn't require fertilization, which means every laid egg is fertile, a cause of their overall population. The in-game mod trait gives immersed population growth bonus. Impassioned is a trait that I, for some reason, chose for a lot of custom species. I'd say represents them being good at inspiring each other. Uh, which could have helped them find motivation to organise themselves. Multitasking is a self-explanatory. I remember that Magpie's instinct was described as something like greatly liking shiny things. Okay, interesting. Right, moving on. So now we're heading to Tinar. Over here. Looking good. The largest gas giant in the system, more massive than Jupiter by a third and slightly larger. Its temperature allows this atmosphere to be dominated by water clouds, which makes it a Sudaski class 2 planet. Like Jupiter, it baths its moons in radiation, so only the outermost one is good for colonization. Okay, there you go. So the moons. First up, we've got this one. Io like volcanic. You know the deal. Uh, next up, we've got Furuxia. It's close to size, our moon is somewhat more massive. It has a nice shell, but it's very thin, so no subsurface ocean. So not quite Europa there. Next up, we've got this one. Least major moon here, so while its ice shell is thicker, it didn't form a subsurface ocean. And lastly, we've got Ruin Ux, which is the last one. The large moon here, a geologically active surface coloured orange by organic compounds and an ocean underneath the ice shell. Um, it's a major place for colonisation due to low radiation and certain resources. It's supposed to have city lights, but the game hides them since there's ice, even when the ice layer is hidden. Very bizarre. You can see that. There you go. Very interesting. They are always switched on as well. Liquid off. Snow off, 
heat valve. Interesting, I've never seen that bug before. Very, very bizarre. So it has the ice shell. That is very strange, I've never seen that. Is it due to the seed? No, it isn't. But how strange. That is really bizarre, look at that. If has for war, always, yeah. That is very bizarre. Never seen that one. Right, moving on. Went to, uh, is it Chinasar? Over here? Oh, there we go. An equivalent of Saturn, with very similar cloud cover and somewhat uh, mass around a quarter Jupiter's. Okay. Um, differences from Saturn could include a lack of rings, and the distance from Comtar is more similar to that of Jupiter. Okay. So it's a Saturn in the distance of Jupiter. We've got the moons. All the moons are somewhat small, with no subsurface oceans and mineral geology. So we've got uh, these two here. Cratered are quite bright, suggesting at least uh, periodic surface renewal. So that is this one and this one. Okay. So this one here has many differences from the inner two and is likely a captured object. Okay. Oh, there's two here. Okay, so that's probably this one, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Lovely. Moving on. Uh, next up, we've got this one. Hinge, hinge shower. The system's only ice giant with a low mass. It is the system's least dense planet and atmosphere is featureless. Coloured is approximately Neptunian shades. It's the only planet here with a ring, although it's the outermost planet. Its orbit is only as distant as Saturn's. Okay. What is this thing? Sharp beak of Bergand Burgandy. A very large ice moon. Over 70 of its mass is water, which causes it to have a low density, which makes it comparable to Mars in size while being closer to Ganymede in mass. The composition also makes its subsurface ocean quite large. Its surface is reddened by organic compounds, but also quite active with cracks and pale renewed areas. It has a noticeable atmosphere of nitrogen, methane, and argon. There you go. Nice. Interesting. Okay, I couldn't fit the stars here. They don't have planets in the simulation, but had in an original version. In short, they either bright or had planets. I put their descriptions in the workshop if you want to have a look. Okay, interesting. So it's just just regular stars, no no planets around them. So you can have a little look. Just a little, you know, obviously a cluster of objects nearby. There they all are there. Very nice. It's a little uh, little group of stars at the end there as well. So cool, nice system. Quite like that. There's a little brown dwarf sitting in there as well. There you go. Hey, let's get it all lined up. Let's have a look. There's the full lineup. All the way down here. Yeah, a lot, lot of stars. There you go. Onto the planets. One of them's actually larger than one of the stars. Look. Red star, the black. So Tinar is actually bigger than that star there. <laughs> there you go. And yeah, there is the lineup of the rest of the planets. There we go. I quite like the interesting, uh, interesting uh, lore of this one, actually. And I really did like that Earth like world with. Well, I say Earth like this. Hattable world, but with very unearth like circumstances with a very little lack of oceans. I like that. Interesting concept. Really, really did like that. But yeah, again, a massive thank you to the creator of this system, Kerbal, for sending this in. And yeah, thank you to Slav Guy for assisting him with that as well. Massive thank you to them. If you guys enjoyed this video, let's even go for 100 likes on it. And also subscribe for more. Help us on the journey to 50,000 subscribers. With that all said, now everybody, make sure you have a great day out there. Stay safe. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.